President Buhari receives Nigerians honored by the Michelle Republic. It was all well justified and it will, uh, and, uh, it will build a better relationship between the two countries. Senate postpones passage of budget. Our committee secretariats are not able to finish processing the budget for us to take today or tomorrow. Central Bank of Nigeria brings House of Representatives on new policies. Nigeria is judged sixth in the world for instant real payments, 10. And these are some of the initiatives that have come off of cashless. Um, good morning, Nigeria. Today, we shall discuss making 2022 Christmas count. All right, uh, of course, uh, December every year comes with a lot of activities. And that's, of course, because it is a month of festivities, uh, the course of the Christmas celebrations. It is also the season which ushers in a new year, characterized, of course, uh, by many activities, uh, buying and selling, traveling, outings, fun fairs. It is the season that is um you know brings uh families together in a kind of reunion it's also a season that ushers in stop taking at the end of the year but for many other people uh they're also uh it's also a time when they prepare for for the new year it is also associated with the usual um new year resolutions and you know kirian all the things that go with celebration <laughs> All right, and uh, while people may be having fun uh, or even uh, uh, being carried away by the activities, uh, of course, of Christmas, it is pertinent to also note that the season also comes with the, its own downsides, uh, which may include a rise in theft, fraud, robbery, and other crimes. Of course, uh, we know now that uh, the criminality in Nigeria mm -hmm. is having different dimensions, you know, mm -hmm. because we just started hearing about uh, you know, banditry not quite long ago. But well, um, it's, it's, it's only going to be an unusual Christmas, uh, characterized, of course, with so many activities, including uh, insecurity. Now, the security agencies are, however, I say, uh, you know, things are in place to tackle uh, whatever criminal activities, you know, that might come up and that, of course, they have upped their game, changing strategies specifically to attack vulnerable, uh, you know, people uh, lost uh, in the festivities. So it is in this regard that security at Yuletide is always a major concern and it is further compounded by the fact that criminals take cover amidst large crowd of celebrants to perpetrate their nefarious activities. Now, and for the Federal Safety Corps, it is another time to commence the preparation with a mandate to eradicate road traffic crashes and create safe mo motoring environments for Nigerians. Bearing that in mind, the Corps has said it had, for the year 2022, experienced 8% reduction of road crashes as compared to last year. Of course, in the course of the program, we should get to know more mm -hmm. about that data because I know that, uh, that last year, Nigeria ranked uh, about the second, you know, when it comes to road crashes globally. Globally. And, and, and you know, Kieran, it's the traffic is heaviest during this period, especially from the southwest to the, you know, south. It's, you're not traveling, are you? And we have very poor drive culture. I just came back from uh, Enugu you yesterday. See? You, see, so, you see, you see, you see, it's, it is for people so, like <laughs> Kieran, you know, that the FIOC is deploying 25,224 personnel, over 11,000 special marshals, 743 patrol vehicles, as well as mobile courts across the country. For this season, and New Year celebrations, all for your comfort. 
Yes, um, well, I would have suggested that uh, that should continue from January to December, not just during the festivities. <laughs> but, 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 but you know why? You, you, you know why? I, I, I wouldn't know why, because uh, there should be continuity, you know, when you want to, you know, get something achieved. I will barely two days, uh, Claire, to Christmas. Mm. Another major concern uh, is that of the high cost of food items and transportation, which uh, was seem to be taking the uh, dream out of the celebration for many Nigerians. You know more about that. I, I also know that uh, there is a little bit of high cost. In Not a little bit. Well, I, well you, you don't go to the market. So those of, us who, so. Those of <laughs> us who go to the market know, you know, the margin of increase. It's, it's, have you bought your chickens yet? Uh, I'm Do not you know how much? I, huh? I'm not responsible for that. My you wife is. You see? I, I, no, but, but I, <laughs> I, I provided for it. All right. Yeah. So, while some traders say they have low patronage occasioned by the high cost of food items and wares, which according to them is not the making, consumers are, of course, uh, of the view that food, which is the main attraction for this season, is gradually being priced out of the reach of many households. And uh, a market survey uh, on some food items uh, revealed that uh, a 50 kg bag of locally produced rice would sold for between 26,000 and 27,000 during the third quarter of the year has been uh, has risen actually to between 40 and 50,000. The same can also be said uh, for livestock such as chicken, turkey, gold. Uh, the list goes on, Claire. So we've, we've told you the different areas that, um, of course, uh, will impact how people mark or celebrate Christmas this year in just you know a uh, few few days time security at your tide is very important you want to know why rising cost of food items is another you know major issue that will impact how christmas is celebrated but the big question we'll be asking on today's edition of good morning nigeria is how can we manage all this how can we make the best of not too pleasant situation at Christmas. How can we check with road accidents during Christmas periods? How can we, of course, um, you know, keep up with the traditions of Christmas with our little uh, income? These are some of the issues we will look at. And I'm sure our newscaster this morning will probably give us an insight because I know she has a lot of experience uh, when it comes to uh, food items, marketing, and, um, you know, bargaining. I'm talking about, uh, and, <laughs> go ahead. You know, you know, you know, and uh, cheap supply of rice <laughs> you get, yeah. Well, uh, well, we, 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 thank you for joining us. I am Kirian Umay, and of course, you know my colleague uh, Claire Adela. But we're going to bring you uh, complimentary segments mm. in the in the course of the program, as mm. always. And uh, for now, mm -hmm. we'd like to bring in Anne mm. Chibuno for real. She's now. already there. <laughs> She's already there. Yeah, uh, and, and, and she goes, she says you 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 are. Uh, a marketer of rice, but we don't know that. All I know is that I know you are a good cook, so you know what the prices are in the market. Well, well, that, that conversation is uh, off camera. It was like <laughs> off camera. Good morning, Claire and uh, Kira, and good morning, Nigeria. Here's the news. President Mahmoud Buhari has expressed formal appreciation to his counterpart from the Nigerian Republic, Mahmoud Bazoum, for conferring on non-Algerian citizens the country's prestigious National Honours Awards. This was while receiving the award recipients on a thank you visit on return to Miami, the country's capital city. The president was quite pleased and he, uh, he showed appreciation and happiness that all neighboring countries, Benin Republic, uh, uh, Cameroon and Chad, in terms of building relationship with Nigeria. Our President uh, Mahmoud Buhari says uh, the topmost priority accorded the welfare and well-being of uh, police officers by his administration is a deliberate attempt at enhancing the nation's internal security for effective management of the country. The president stated this while granting audience to the acting chairman and the commissioners of the Police Service Commission. Good to use my spot. So much grateful and uh, we appreciate all the efforts you are making uh, in enhancing and, uh, and uh, making available the welfare of the current uh, police officers. You put smiles on their faces. I think in the space of time and resources, 
I think we have done our best. Since then, we decided whether our best is good enough. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo has called for the adoption of independent but creative sources of funding that uh, include environment funds to complement budgetary allocation to universities. Professor Oshimbajo, in audience with the delegation from the Olabisi Wanabanjo University, notes that the future of uh, public university education hinges on adopting a business model administered by serious-minded people. The Vice, President, the Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Aboya, appreciates the VP's selfless contribution to the growth of the university as a pioneer lecturer in the Faculty of Law. Building it from the scratch, his mentorship and the entrenchment of a culture of research at the institution. Information and Culture Minister Ryan Mohammed says the Presidential candidate of the opposition PDP, that's the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, has uh, positioned himself to sack people from their jobs and worsen the security situation in the country. The minister stated this at the 15th edition of the PNB School Card Series in Abuja, which featured the Minister of Police Affairs, Mohamed Binyadi. Alaji Atiku has simply informed Nigerians that he will reverse all the efforts made by the PMB administration to achieve self sufficiency in the production of many staples, especially rice. By that statement, the former vice president has informed the country's millions of rice farmers that they will soon lose their jobs. The Senate uh, has pos postponed the passage of the 2023 appropriation bill to Wednesday, the 28th of December, 2022, two days after Christmas. The Senate had announced that it will uh, pass the budget Thursday this week. We are not able to receive the report of the committee. Our committees had to start a process of cleaning up the the bill first that process of course also engaged the executive arm because uh, the problem came from there the central bank of nigeria has informed the house of representatives that nigeria made remarkable progress in the global financial stage since the launch of the cashless policy in 2012 as uh, this placed the country in the same league with countries like India and China. The deputy governor of the CBN in charge of financial stability stated this while briefing House members during plenary on policies uh, recently introduced by the CBN. It's just sixth in the world for instant real payments. We are the only African country in the top 10 and this has been as a result of um, some of the initiatives that have come off of cashless. In the United States and other places, even when the law or the policy takes effect, you are allowed to continue to use the old mode at the same time until it's completely phased out. The federal government has uh, declared Monday 26th, Tuesday 27th, December 2022, and Monday, 2nd January 2023, as public holiday to mark the Christmas, Boxing Day, and New Year New Year's Day celebrations. Minister of Interior Ralph Arigbachala, in a statement on behalf of the federal government, felicitates with Christians and all Nigerians at home and, and in the diaspora on the celebrations. Arigbachala joins Christians to emulate the doctrines of Christ in faith, hope, and love, stating peace and security as critical conditions for economic development and prosperity. The minister wishes all Christians in particular a happy Christmas and all Nigerians a peaceful and prosperous New Year celebrations. On that note, we conclude the news, but uh, the program continues shortly with Kieran and Claire. Thanks for staying with us. Indeed, you can't beat our reach. That's the NTA. And this is Good Morning Nigeria on the Network Service. Time to join Alika Okbanachi Arwa for some business news.
The Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Professor Issa Pantami, has emphasized that quality software development will be essential in expanding Nigeria's digital economy. Pantami made the remark at the first software testing conference in Lagos. Professor Pantami also acknowledged that the importance of software in global development is essential. In another development, the Nigerian Port Authority has canvassed repositioning of the shipping industry. The Managing Director of Nigerian Port Authority, Mohamed Belu Koko, has charged stakeholders to make the shipping business beyond mere vessel and cargo handling and explore other opportunities. He disclosed this at an award in Lagos. Now let's take a look at Thursday tradings on the floor of the exchange. <laughs> With business news, Alika Opanachi, Arua. Thank you indeed, uh, our, uh, Alika, for that uh, business package. We appreciate that. Next on Good Morning Nigeria is a review of today's national dailies. <laughs> All right, it's time to welcome Chooks the Boy, Chukudu mm. Baja. It has not been this cold since the Hamatan, you know, broke out. Indeed. My jaws are not clattering, but Indeed. Claire, I must admit that I hate cold, the cold condition. Well, but I'm happy to be here. You are not alone, Casey. <laughs> I mean, uh, Chukudi, and I wish Chukudi, you know, could do some of his footworks for us, but, but Chukudi don't. You know, no, don't start. The don't start. I, I had in the newsroom. No, don't start. I'm retired. Okay, Chukudi, good to have you this <laughs> morning. You. Thank you for joining us. And there uh, we have uh, two papers to review here. Mm. And of course, uh, look at what Chukudi has in stock for us. For now, let's go to the Daily uh, Sun. Daily Sun newspaper. Uh, just uh, besides the uh, name plate 2023 polls uh, Buhari National Assembly okay 4.5 billion to fuel police vehicles uh, that's on page 28 now the least story my administration will be driven by youths and women that's according to will be of the Labour Party it's on page 8 now PDP APC fights over alleged plot to scuttle 2023 polls uh, a writer to that disagree on competency of presidential candidates it's on page eight now there are other uh, striking stories here or headlines rather now we ordered 500 million pieces of new naira notes that's a cbn uh it says new cash withdrawal limit not political it's on page six i feared dead many injured well uh one feared dead well this is not well well, well uh, captured but again, it's about uh, a road accident in Lagos. It's uh, where four die on Lagos Abricota Expressway, on Bridge 5. Now, troops kill 103 terrorists, arrest 40 others, destroy 57 illegal refineries, as on Bridge 4. The security, IGP accedes uh, to Governor Ugwai's uh, request for more personnel and equipment, inaugurate 76 police mobile force squadron built by Enugu State Governor. That's on page 26. Uh, Soku oil field dispute. Bayasa asks uh, Aram Ramfrak to obey Supreme Court order. That's on page 6. Aulon Vale preferred presidential candidate in January. That's according to Wiki. That's on page 8. Now, errors delay passage of 2023 appropriation bill. Uh, the story is also on page 6. As a writer to that, Senate reps now to OK budget next Wednesday. Article will implement PIA's provision on host community funds, as according to OCOA. It's on page 8 of the Daily Sun. Claire. All right. Uh, the front page of uh, Leadership uh, uh, Friday 
it's all about politics it's all about elections it's all about ambitions it's all about 2023 i'll just take the very salient ones the lead story on the front page uh tinimbo will be speak to issues underscore governance plans they all have riders there as to what they want to do and uh also to the right column no amount of threat will stop 2023 elections uh of course that's uh, a vow given by the federal government uh but just away from those uh, political stories um you have illegal abortions report vindicates army fingers foreign ngos uh details of that on page six uh, Kaduna emerges best performance state in World Bank's Andrin project, and this is a very interesting one. Uh, seven uni Abuja lecturers get one billion naira research grants, and uh, this this is very commendable. Uh, you know, interesting things are happening at uh, at that university. I hear, uh, so I think this is commendable, Chukwudi. But just before I come to you, uh, let's take a look at uh, the stories just beneath the name plate. Um, cash withdrawal limit naira redesign not political and that's uh, the cbn speaking to members of the national assembly uh yesterday so chooks the boy yeah yeah you can see that um the papers are not screaming in terms of headlines because we've come to that part of the year when you practically have to search for stories <laughs> and this is the time i ask newsrooms to show us that you know that nigerians own the news lifestyle and their uh, community news this is the time you you, you air those now, uh, now let's start with um, the national assembly deferring passage of the budget uh, let's forget the blame aspect of it the important thing is that the senate is saying they are reconvening on wednesday and hopefully by thursday this uh, they, they are going to pass the, the the budget themselves the house of representatives is also not left out in the urgency being built into moving towards this uh, the signature of the president for this uh, appropriation plan uh, for, for for the country um we have to commend the fact that uh, uh, since this administration started there has been spirited attempts there have been spirited attempts for the budget to be passed early enough Remember what happens when the estimates drag into March, April. Fine. The presidency, uh, the ministries, they are free to spend some amount of money, percentage, when the budget has not been passed. But the real thing is when the budget is passed early enough and spending goes into earnest so that the economy does not take any fallout from monies that should come into, into the flow not coming in when when it should so i think uh, this is very good let them come back the lawmakers and do what they have promised to do by wednesday and thursday so that nigerians would have a, a smooth sale in terms of uh, getting monies to spend early in the year the other story that attracts my attention here is uh, the one coming from the minister of police affairs that's um, um uh, Dr. Mohammed Megadi. Yes, uh, yes Megadi. Yes, I, I, I was going to ask you to make sure I don't mispronounce that name. I hate it when newscasters mispronounce local names. And then they go all the way, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev. They become very Russian and refuse to be Nigerian. So thank you for pronouncing that name well. Now, he was talking. Uh, when he was given the report card on the activities of his ministry since his return in 2019. Um, you see, when I hear things about the police, I feel very good. Nigerians have this, um, many of us have this sarcastic attitude towards the police. I am not supporting a situation where the police do not live above board. Remember, they're in the full glare of publicity, so they need to put out an attitude that doesn't suggest that we are people who are not mindful of the image we put out. Mm -hmm. But I always say that the police are not really being given enough attention by my young people. I'm happy, happy that uh, July tw uh, 2022, a new salary structure came into place. Their welfare was being worked on. 
I used to tell my friend, if you want to know how poor our policemen are, go to the barracks and look at their window. The curtain you see there simply puts you off. So I'm happy that something has happened to them from July 2022, and they're now being positioned to serve us better. Yes, I, I may just have to uh, come into on this uh, police issue, you know, because I, I'm particularly concerned about the police. You know, I had uh, experience some time ago, uh, an IG of police, you know, I was uh, asked to go and cover an event at the police headquarters. And uh, I confronted the IGP then uh, to say, because uh, I, I came there and I met a well-dressed, well, you know, dressed policeman, you know, at the headquarters. Sparkling. So sparkling. In fact, uh, I mean, if you're a criminal and you see any of them, you'll you be very much careful, you know, what you're going to do. All right. But I have said, what about the men on the, on the road? The operationals, the operationals, they don't look healthy. They don't look healthy. They look tattered. And you, you are talking about the, the deserving respect from the public. It, it, it's not possible because the policemen who, who are carrying out their responsibilities on the streets or roads and across Nigeria, they can pick money from people. Because, because well, they said, look, okay, it's a, don't give bribe. You can only give bribe when you commit an offense. But when you look at a man carrying AK-47 on, under the sun, and then we will tattered shoes, you know, uh, and the butter, the, you know, you know tr trousers and, and, and all of that. You, you are appreciating. It's natural. You are appreciating. It may not be the right thing to do. But if police is well equipped and these people are properly paid, yeah. then this issue of uh, respect to, will not be there. Because if you see a policeman well kitted with all the gadgets around him, you don't, you don't, you don't. I, I don't know what Claire some, feels some, about it, but I'm happy we're talking. You know, the same so, sometimes day. it's Our also police must be looked after. Yes. Uh, Chukudi and uh, Kiran. Sometimes it also depends upon the individual. The individuals have it because I mean, if you see others well kitted, looking clean, looking decent, you know, and the same, uh, they of the same. Well, rank are working high. for politicians. The same no, 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 you get into uh, uh, onto the streets. It's not exactly the same exactly. story anymore, Claire. I think. Uh, I think. Uh, I think we are over generalizing. Uh, but yes. the most important thing to it. note is and that they got better welfare that. salaries from July 2022. Exactly. So we must not uh, uh, lose sight of that. And don't forget so that some surprising. of them also. I, I don't know what the situation is now. You know, purchased their 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 uniforms, their boots by themselves. Now, by themselves. of course, so when mm. the one they give so, you get, gets old, you replace it by yourself. Uh -huh. Oh, anyway, so, the, 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 the story I would love, and this is because we kept, you know, uh, on this program, we've talked about the need for our university professors to engage in research activities. Mm -hmm. And that is a very low area in our educational sector. And if seven, seven lecturers are getting awards, you know, uh, because of their publications in, uh, I just want to read this out, uh, publications in... Um, First class journals across the world, and, they, and they're getting about one billion a total of one billion for publication. The, this paper did not say what those research publications are on, but the fact that they have been recognized is something that we must commend, it's something that we must also encourage, yeah. you know, in other universities. You know, when we talk about research by the universities, you're talking about a path of development for the nation, they are the people charged to chart new ways of thinking and doing things. Remember the young pounder way back? Mm -hmm. who, who invented it? I, I, the I, Nigerian. The Nigerian. That was a major step towards helping household activities and all that, easing the process of cooking and all that. Mm -hmm. Our universities need to be, to be looked at. Our professors, mm -hmm. or, or the dons there, need to get money so that they can actually... When, when, when we were in the university, it didn't seem to me that the lecturers were really interested in their salaries as much as they were interested in curiosity that was going to lead to better quality of life for people. Mm. 
Okay, so, yeah, this yeah, is very important. Yeah, in terms of uh, research and development, we yes. have over 100 research institutes across Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And in terms of universities as well, many universities have been carrying out researches over the years. I'm glad that these uh, uh, gentlemen have been selected globally mm -hmm. and honored. And we what have you. Funded now, our, yes. prob our challenge is not in science development. It is not in the intellectual capacity or ability of our professors. It is in implementing what they have put in place. If you have a research result and cannot be translated Translate into it. reality, mm -hmm. into product, we, we normally say, it becomes we, we, beautiful we, we normally say, move it from the laboratory to the floor of the manufacturing sector. That's a good and that and way, it will get to the public. You make me jealous. And, the way you and, count. And to let us say, theory without Pradika is blind. Exactly. And vice versa. Hmm. Yes. So, but this is this is just a question, and and we'll sign off for a newspaper review. It's an, on the inside page, page six, to be precise, of the leadership. It's a warning from China. It says Shanghai Hospital warns of tragic battle as pandemic. That's COVID nineteen pandemic spreads. It says it has warned its staff to prepare for a tragic battle with COVID nineteen, as it expects half of the city's twenty five million people to be infected by the virus by the end of next week while the virus sweeps through china largely unchecked so this is a in fact it's scary you know when the government uh, because, was people... forced by the protests to mm. relax the mm. covid restrictions mm. and all that mm. you know china we're talking about 1.4 billion people mm -hmm. some of the things you take for granted in economies that have 50 million people 100 million you can't try it in china mm. <laughs> I, I understand. And, 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 so, so I, I, I guess they uh, have to think again. You know, you know, you know, Shanghai. Shanghai is uh, the how do I put it now? Shanghai is the nucleus mm. of Chinese China. economy. Okay, keep and like, if anything happens there economically, it, it, uh, oh, oh. It's so um, Kieran, I have to, we have to go. We have to go. But I know you observe two things. Uh, one thing, Kieran and Chukudi have come with their red caps and red red. Uh, is the root of glass and wine, indicating that both of them are already ready but for food. They are two different You didn't? <laughs> <laughs> All right, he had, had it. I really want the time to do it. Say thank you to him. Come, 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 come. There are two different cups here. They are red, yes. Please, please, please. All right, so I think it from here. Okay. <laughs> All right, take a short break. All right, once again, I welcome you to Good Morning Nigeria. And uh, if you've just joined us, you're right on time for our conversation to kickstart. And as a prompt for that, we would like to uh, uh, join Abdul Salam Jibril, and he will give us uh, the prompt put together by him. Christmas is celebrated around the world with joyful carols, brightly wrapped gifts, fairy bands, and festivities. In the build-up to Christmas celebrations in Nigeria, decorations begin to appear in streets, homes, shops, and offices, with many businesses and religious bodies promoting events that reflect the season. Usually, many households catch the Christmas fever at this period as Christmas trees beautify the streets and neighborhoods come alive with string lights and buntings. This time, except for a very few, many streets that usually come alive this period seems not to have caught the Christmas bug. The usual Christmas hampers that are presented as gifts by individuals, groups, and corporate organizations during the celebrations seems to be absent also. Dealers that trade in hampers have expressed disappointment in low patronage, stressing that they rocketed more sales compared to this time last year. Apart from the usual festivities during Christmas, reports have shown that the season also comes with a rise in crime and criminalities. This is also the season when Nigerians embark on the annual ritual of traveling to spend time with family and friends. The question is, how secure are the roads? Mm -hmm. Guests will be speaking on these and other issues on this edition of Good Morning Nigeria. Hi, 
Right, it promises to be an exciting topic, uh, making 2022 Christmas count. And we've told you uh, the templates that we will be discussing, uh, you know, what might impact how you spend your Christmas. Uh, we'll look at security. We'll look at, uh, of course, your, the part of your income and uh, other issues. But we have our guests all here in the studio and, of course, those joining us via Zoom. Let me begin with Joshua Kaede Fanola. Uh, who is the Deputy Corps Marshal Operations, Federal Road Safety Corps. I uh, would like to thank you very much for joining us for this thank conversation. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Also here with us is Wing Commander Musa Salmano, retired, is a development peace and security expert. And I, I know he's not tired because he's quite young. <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. Well, uh, on the other <laughs> side, I'm very tired. Retired, I'm very tired. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, having me. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Uh, okay. And uh, of course, Jido Ojo, the public affairs analyst is here with us. Uh, Jido, of course, is a household name on Good Morning Nigeria. And uh, mm -hmm. via Zoom uh, from Ilori, the capital of Kwara State, we have uh, to introduce uh, Najim Yassin. Uh, Vice President, International Transport Federation. We are glad to have you join us this morning. Well, I, I just hope that uh, uh, Najim had me. Once again, good morning, Najim, and welcome to Good Morning Nigeria. We want to establish whether you can uh, uh, hear us from here. Good morning, good morning, Nigeria. Good. That, that's interesting. Um, gentlemen, you're welcome. Mm. Uh, welcome to the program. Yes. Uh, well, I, I will not even know the, 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 the particular uh, area to go to. We'll okay, about let, let me start. We're talking about security. Let, let, let me start. But, okay, go yes, ahead. Yes, let, let me start. And I just would like to ask everyone, everyone here if you've noticed anything unusual, you know, about... It's just a few days to Christmas. Have you noticed anything unusual? I've, I've been, you know... Normally by now, Jide... You will see hampers, you know, colors. You will see uh, activities, but I don't know. Let me start with you. Anything unusual? <laughs> <laughs> well, what is unusual is what you've just mentioned, the economic crunch, which has made many of us to have um, very quiet Christmas celebrations. You see, by now, most corporations, um, agencies will have had very elaborate decorations around the offices, the music, the carols, and so everything is limited to school now. <laughs> it is not school carols. So when when the children have their carols, that's the uh, maybe churches. The, the, but um, for us. Uh, the ampers are no longer circulated. I don't. I mean, I don't oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've not yet received one. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's coming. I wouldn't know. In time pass, sometimes I get up to five. But um, the economic crunch has, has not allowed people to celebrate the way we used to. Um, and then, of course, the fuel queues uh, again. Uh, high cost of living has made Christmas, whether you like it or not, you have to. Uh, really re re reduce your um, uh, spending on Christmas. Given the fact that uh, in another week or two, schools resumes and then school fees, it uh, starts you in the face. But nevertheless, people still celebrate because it's not the Christmas celebration is not the elaborate, lavish, ostentatious uh, display of opulence. It is actually in appreciating god for keeping you alive and for understanding the reason for the season which is somebody a savior born uh you know to 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 save, save the world mankind. And, uh, so <laughs> so so if you have that understanding whether you have money or not whether you could celebrate lavishly or not it wouldn't matter as much in fact i i couldn't buy any Christmas clothes for the children, uh, given the fact that we're looking at you know another two weeks or there about school fees. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, <laughs> oh, okay, Jide, yeah. you know, you know, because when she said some, oh, something unusual that you mm -hmm. noticed, um, I've not seen anything unusual. I mean, because uh, Christmas comes every year, and every year we sit here to discuss the same thing, you know, and see the same things. So, yeah, like, there are, like, there are like traditions, so, sorry, yeah, go there ahead, are, go there ahead. Are traditions that are associated with Christmas you know, overtly or, you know, otherwise, apart from the spiritual element of Christmas, there are 
you know activities that yeah, yeah activities that you and i know yeah that are no longer being you know, exactly I, I think uh, the, the the right word here is that uh, people are now checking their pockets like right mm -hmm. <laughs> but people are still <laughs> celebrating one way or another Let and uh, you know you know when when uh, jide came from a spiritual angle we all know that uh, you know we have a a man called jesus christ whose birth death resurrection and promised second coming from the bedrock of christian faith but in, in a bit to celebrate him we don't have to uh, spend all we have because we're celebrating but he wouldn't be happy with you if you do that <laughs> so <laughs> so being unusual is always the same the same thing always and the person that will tell us about unusual things should be the, the, uh, the Paris. Paris. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, coming back from Enugu yesterday by road i saw one bus like that i cannot imagine how the bus was loaded in up by the side <laughs> and the back every <laughs> part of that <laughs> bus even the bonnet <laughs> so I, I said okay the artistry in putting that together <laughs> is what i was watching not even the offense <laughs> <laughs> so if you see a a a a a a man if you see it you first of all appreciate the artistry the 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 do that before you now ask him what about your tires and what have you and when you now enter and see, put the uh, uh, um, get the driver you know one man who is struggling to survive in nigeria and i want to tell him why are you loading all this he will tell look this trip i'm only making one trip a day and after this trip i will go home and he will take you know, so what will you do to him if you charge him we don't even have the money to pay and all so there are usual things <laughs> from your angle so tell us more what your men have been telling you from across the nation okay thank you very much uh, you you've said it all Actually, this season is uh, it means so much to different groups of people. Those people we are talking about, actually, some of them you will see them on the highway once in a year, and possibly they are coming from all these farmsteads, you know, interior, uh, not just village, but they are coming from the farm, the hinterland. Yes, and they are coming to show their face in the villages in the city for the first time this year mm -hmm. and they have to come to show that while we are we were away god blessed us <laughs> so you will see them they will carry goat on top of their bus they will carry <laughs> uh, food the items the they, will carry, uh, they, they will do. carry one things they are going to give to people <laughs> and then what they are going to eat for this period before they go back so we expect that in short that is the usual for this period mm. but our emphasis will be on how to ensure that people are able to get to where they are going safely mm. so that kind of uh, uh, situation well we'll stop the person to let him know that uh, you consider danger to yourself and the road to the other road users but we'll not allow that to one person to you know corner our attention when uh, we need to make the traffic flow that is one then two uh, we need to also understand that um, this period is harvesting period for farmers. It is period of festivities. It is a period of um, heightened um, activity for transporters. You see some of the vehicles that they have packed for almost one year. They quickly do some <laughs> they, repairs. Uh, repairs on it, it and put repairs. it on the road. <laughs> yes, and put it on the road because, yes, of course, such vehicles, um, they collect money from passengers, maybe from Abuja, and then get to Guagalada or Abaji and break down, okay. and then you'll be looking at each other's faces. <laughs> uh, let me call my manager, the vehicle has spoiled, but they have collected the money. So these are the, these are the usuals for this period. For us, it, they are usual. And sometimes you find yourself uh, people say road safety we are stranded here so <laughs> what, what, what can you do <laughs> you are the government that we can see we will have to go and call look for bus for them because they are stranded mm. and they, they we are the only government they can see now they say this man he has deceived us so that you is it for us it's a <laughs> uh, uh -huh, yes like i was saying <laughs> so for for now this <laughs> Is is, uh, is Christmas goat? <laughs> yes, Christmas goat. And the person say, "Oh, no safety, so please, you will not allow us to celebrate." You know, so we are between allowing them to celebrate and ensuring safety. Okay, we'll, we'll come back to you. Let's bring in uh, Wing Commander Musa Salman, retired now. And you know, the 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 kind of uh, activities that go on during this period, it's one that makes insecurity talk out the talk about insecurity you know um it, it it whittles down the hype about insecurity I, I don't know i don't know if i'm correct yes um well thank you so much 
when you asked about uh, something unusual, uh, for me, uh, it was just, okay, the unusual would be um, the issues of uh, is security incidents. Are they going up or they are going down? Mm. Um, the usual perhaps now is we will anticipate that there are going to be increase in uh, incidences, either minor uh, like uh, burglary and so on, but also with in terms of major crimes and even violence or conflict uh, uh, like we've seen in the past. Now, so we ask the questions, are there operations like uh, the Python dance uh, being commissioned now and so on? You hear that um, that uh, has not, uh, I can't remember if the army launched uh, mm -hmm. another uh, operation uh, of late, uh, especially that used to be during this time because yes. of the issues of uh, crime and so on, surge in crime and so on. Um, so for me, it seems things, uh, perhaps I will want to be on the positive side, improvement. Mm -hmm. And even if you go look at numbers in terms of uh, kidnappings, in terms of attacks, uh, and so on and so forth, you hear that uh, the numbers are, are showing that there's uh, some level of improvement if you compare with other years and so on. And so um, the unusual for me is that we're perhaps we're being optimistic that things are getting better. And this Christmas is going to be, um, in terms of major crimes, mm -hmm. uh, Perhaps yeah. a very, uh, very good, good one. Juice. Now, if you add it to the, so kind of trying to explain maybe the uh, other crimes in terms of burglary and so mm -hmm. maybe because of the economy that mm -hmm. Gide spoke about, so people are, tips are tired and say, okay, well, even when we go there, the effort we put in and what we get in return <laughs> is so reduced. Uh, so, uh, but then uh, in terms of security, I think uh, things are, yeah, yeah, yes, yesterday on this pro, uh, on this on this program, we had the spokesperson of the DCI, the Immigration Service, mm. and he said um, in Lagos alone, you had about uh, one hundred and fifty uh, Nigerian diasporans you know, returning home. Now, does that um, does that give us an insight into again, you know, the level of security? So, um, for me to comment on that, perhaps is to know what is the figo uh, the previous years and so on. So if he's saying that, perhaps it's, maybe there's an increase. Yes. So if there's an increase, it shows confidence. It shows people feel uh, either safer uh, where they are coming to or where they are now is also getting hotter. So in a way, anyway, they feel home. It's uh, whatever it is, let me be back home. Let me be with my people. It's a usual period, like uh, this year I said, we... It's the period that people move around. Yes. And with that, that's where the issues of insecurity come. Yeah. People move around, people come together, both the good and the bad. Uh, people live where they are, so people, uh, the bad guys know that uh, there are no people at home. Mm -hmm. uh, businesses are left, uh, you know. So that absence of everyday people is what makes uh, criminality to go up. And that is also the period that law enforcement uh, agents are very i mean it's a very tough period because uh you know the presence of people reduces the incidence can reduce the incidence of crime because uh, there are eyes yes, yes, all right yes. so all right i'm not talking about insecurity as, as rightly pointed out uh, but this time of the year is when people have uh, people plan their, their holiday mm -hmm. you know especially those in diaspora right and even those within nigeria i also plan marriages uh, wine carrying mm -hmm. weddings and, and what have you now, let me bring in Jide here, since we're talking about insecurity. And what happened uh, uh, last week, or thereabouts in Anambra, Ebony, uh, Inugu, and, 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 and so on. There were killings. Of course, uh, we, we felt so bad about that. And of course, the governor of Enugu State uh, uh, did what he could, you know, to bring in the IGP and uh, others to wade into that. Um, Jide, what do you make of that, considering the period, the returnees are coming from different parts of the world, and uh, as uh, the uh, uh, retired uh, 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 gentleman said here, that, uh, you know, it, it's just a thing of the mind. If you feel safe, you go home. You know, <laughs> when you go to the East, you know, people here will be telling you, how, how are you going to the East? There's danger in the East. I said, but I'm there, nothing is happening. <laughs> and those in the East will be asking you if you're in Abuja, ah, I, yeah, Abuja is surrounded. Are you? I said, Look, I'm in Abuja and nothing is happening. So, is a way of, but I, if you feel safe, you go to where you want to go. So, what's your own assessment? The, one, one unusual thing which um, just occurred to me is that we are having a Christmas that is 
um, coinciding with political season. Mm -hmm. And because it's coinciding with political season, there is a lot of activities, uh, political activities going on. And criminality, uh, political violence is also getting into the mix of uh, Christmas. Um, and, and, and you see, you cannot have a holistic <clears throat> assessment because it depends on where, where you are residing. Um, many families I know refuse to travel this year because they said they don't have money or that home is not even safe for them to go to. You could see many marriages that used to take place in the East. It's not taking place in Abuja. Funerals, you just go and bury, mm -hmm. come and do celebration in Abuja. Yeah. These are unusual things. People, people. I mean, my landlord is an Igbo man. He said he's not traveling. He said with all the madness going on in the South, he cannot go. Home. And so he's staying by. Last week, last year, he went for two weeks. So these are dynamics that are because politicians and political activities uh, as heightened. Election is February. Uh, so uh, you see a lot of um, <clears throat> political uh, activities mixing with uh, Christmas celebration, definitely the people at the grassroots will be better for it in terms of getting uh, some gift from political class who are contesting election. Oh, this is your Christmas. wine for Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, but don't forget, I'm contesting for Senate. <laughs> this is your good, so this is your rice. bag of rice. <laughs> but don't forget, I'm contesting for governor. So... The politicians will have to spend a lot more than they, are, they do at this season than they do previously. But for ordinary citizens like uh, my uh, organ and I, uh, it, it doesn't really change anything beyond the fact that we wish we had more money in our post <laughs> to be able to have a better celebration than we have. Thank you, Jide. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll come back to the studio, but let's bring in the Vice President, International Transport Federation, or Jim Yassin, uh, who's a, again a familiar face uh, on Good Morning Nigeria. And uh, I, I don't know how uh, cold the lorry is now, but let me ask you a funny question. Have you received any hampers yet? Hello? <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. No, I said, have you received any hampers yet? No, 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 no not hampers. yet. <laughs> no hampers. <laughs> have, you give, yet. have you given? I have not given. Aha! <laughs> Why? Why, Vice President? Because of the economic situation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk, let's talk about uh, uh, transport fare. You know, I was discussing with someone yesterday. I said I remember my elementary science it, it tells me that whatever goes up you know must always come down but certainly not with transport fare is there any sort of incentive for travelers at this period from your members yeah you see uh, thank you very much this period is festivity period and you can look at what is happening the fuel scarcity is hitting everywhere because in some area, in some part of the country, our members buy petrol at rate of more than even 300, 300 naira per litre. Here in, in Lorraine yesterday, I bought in my car 260 naira per litre. If you compare all this, you don't expect the cost of the transportation to come down. These are part of these are things that makes the price to rise, and even other amenities that our members go to. Everything have gone high, a food item and all other things. So that is why you cannot find a stable transport fares in the country. We are staying with you. Uh, uh, not Jean. Um, yes, transport fare is on the high side, that's sure scarcity. Uh, but uh, in other parts of the country, we don't have scarcity of fuel. What we have is increase in price of uh, pump, uh, increase in pump price, like the 250, 240, 
as you have also observed in in Kwara State. Now, considering all of that, your your, your men, you know, take advantage of that situation mm -hmm. to now, you know, hike the price to a point where it becomes difficult for ordinary Nigerians to to, to travel. But I, I must commend the governor of uh, uh, Brunei State, you know, Governor Professor Zulum. You know what he did yesterday. I saw on the news he actually paid transport fares for people who are going down to the east or southern part of the country for a Christmas celebration. Very, yeah, very, very commendable indeed. You know. So what are you doing? Uh, in terms of uh, letting your men know that there should be a limit to this hike, is there any 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 kind of compromise that you are willing to to, to take to at least be part of a Christmas celebration? Let Nigerians know that they are also uh, part of Christmas celebration. Is there a possibility for you to reach out to your men and your associations across Nigeria to, of course, bring down the cost of transport fare during this period? Yeah, thank you very much. As you said. We directed the, we have a uh, leadership that control the parks in various parts throughout the country. And we direct them to make sure that they put eye. They shouldn't allow the members to charge anything, any fears of their wish. There is a regulation which the leadership in the parks, any vehicles that goes out of our motor parks have a regulated price which we didn't allow because that is the area where we too can contribute to the development of the country so we don't allow it and we still call on the members to make that the leadership to make sure that they put eye on each of the vehicle goings out of the motor parks so that the prices will not go high beyond the expectation. Sorry, Claire. Mm. In addition to that, what about uh, maintenance of vehicles? We have FRC rep here. Uh, your men oftentimes don't engage in uh, you know regular maintenance of their vehicles. That, uh, of course, uh, results in breakdown of vehicles along the roads across Nigeria. And, uh, of course, uh, drive culture of, of your people. Some are very rough on the road. What are you doing about that? Is there any way you're also uh, educating them on, on how to drive? Because if you see them now, you know, in, in, very early in the morning, they have already taken what uh, my people call apparatchia, you know, some gene uh, in the morning. You, you know, as you're about to travel, you, you, know, you know that the driver will already be smelling something you know and on the road you will see that he's speeding i know over doing wrong overtake overtaking and, and what have you dangerous driving across nigeria what are you doing about that thank you very much uh you see the drivers those that goes out of the various motor parks out of the country because when we go to the road you cannot differentiate there are those who just move on the streets? They are not from the parks, so the the our our leadership there we don't have control on those who are not coming from the motor parks. But those who are coming going out of the motor parks, we make sure that there is no 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 one that will go out in in the mode of alcohol or whatever, and we should make sure that his vehicle is roadworthy. But when you find the vehicles on the highway, you can't differentiate those that comes out of the motor parks or those that are on the on, on, on the highway. And this is the this is the, this is the area where the Federal Road Safety Corps are on the highway to checkmate all these excess and these rough drivers so that they can make sure they put them to their senses. But I, I assured you that those that are going out of the motor parks we shouldn't allow we because i hear the federal road safety uh uh commercial are talking that there are some vehicles that their vehicles are not up to date and they will pick people before abuja to bagwalada will stop and then they will be looking for this thing. those vehicles are not the vehicles that come out of a motor parks because before a vehicle comes out of a park we must show that that vehicle is roadworthy but people picking passengers at the roadside and that is why we are calling that anybody that want to board a bike should go to designated motor parks throughout the country and board a vehicle so if there is anything the leader the union there 
or the driver will be held responsible because we have his number and the details of those vehicles. So these are what is happening on the highways. To take advantage of, of the uh, favorable uh, Zoom connection and, and just uh, speak with you also, uh, I, I know that the spirit of uh, you know festivities like Christmas and even uh, Salah celebrations, you know, it's all about making sacrifices. And during those periods, you know, Nigerians are expected to, you know, also, you know, make some sacrifices. And you see the different sectors. You see the uh, FRSC, you know, bringing out more people. You know, you see the different uh, other, you know, segments that are responsible for maintaining, um, uh, you know, peaceful and uh, peace and security during this period, playing their own role. What kind of sacrifice, you know, uh, are your men also bringing in at this period, uh, 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 during this period? That's one. Then secondly, you talked about regulation. Do you have standard transport fare for all routes? Yeah, we have a standard transport fare in all routes throughout. That is why I said, all motor parks, you cannot charge, you can't charge anything that is not already being, we, we, we have the face. And no matter how it is, if you are going out of the motor parks, there is a, the, 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 what they are charging, you must make sure that you cannot charge what you want. But if it is not where we control, it is outside the park or these private parks. They charge anything they like. But in the motor parks, where the union is, you can't charge anything. It is because we know that is the area that we too can contribute our own quota. But apart that, all those privates charge anything they like. So, and the this in our own way yes okay assuming i'm traveling from Ilori, for instance from garage uh in Ilori to the southeast i mean garage is is your you control the garage park in Ilori. what yeah. is the what is the standard transport fare and again what will be the standard transport fare from the park say in abuja you know maybe to the southwest or to the southeast uh right now i can't tell you exactly. because no. we have the members we have the leaders in the parks and as i i'm talking to you now i can't tell you that this is what is charging from abuja to southwest but if your men went to our designated motor parks there they will see that the fear we are charging is still what we are charging all over. And if you come to the park and in Loni, you find the same thing. But now, as I'm talking to you, I cannot tell you that this is what is being charged. But we have a standard charge. And we didn't allow them to charge beyond that charges. And as I've told you, the, the foil and everything they sell as anything they like, and nobody controls them or whatever. But if you go to the parks, we didn't hide the price beyond the reach of the, the common people. All, all right, uh, Najim, thank you indeed. Um, I, I wasn't expecting you to tell us uh, the standard there, uh, you know, <laughs> price, because I, I know that, you know, if you have to buy a bus, the, the, the type of vehicle also determines how much you are charged. If you want to use no, a he car, said, he said uh, that he said it is regulated. It is still the under that is regulation because if you want to use a car, it's more comfortable. You you pay for it. If you want to use a bus that perhaps have a four people on the on, on one line of the seat, or of course you yeah. you, you pay less. Okay, and so on. So I understand that. I understand. It also depends on the days. On, exactly the days. Yes. As the days by. Oh, oh, okay. Price. Let me bring in a a, a Kyle, the panel here. I, I I have a concern. I, I I sometimes ask myself when I see your men, um, ask myself whether you people are really backing and not biting. 
I was one of the first set of uh, uh, special mashals in, in Abuja in 2006 to understand your operational methodology. Fine, well articulated. But my point is this. When you're on the road, let it be practical, and you see somebody doing one way, driving against, against one way, and your man will be busy trying to direct him, get back to the line, as if he's begging the person to somebody who has already, you know, who's already at fault. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I was expecting that when some, some, some person, uh, so, uh, uh, any person is caught doing that, you don't need to talk to him. You stop him, take his details, take his uh, plate number details, give him a ticket and go. You don't need to go to him. Give him a ticket of five or 10,000. Monitor him. We don't seven days. He doesn't pay. You 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 climb the vehicle. So people are not respecting FRC. So let Nigerians know really what is what are your responsibilities on the on the road. Is it just to avoid crashes? What do you do to enforce it? Is it just for you to come and say, oh, zero safety? If you want to answer a call, you put it down. At least when you pass, you you put it on again. You continue and and all of that. So <laughs> how when would your men be, be start biting? So people because people ah, to be honest with you. Nigeria ranks among the highest, how do I put it, rough, number of rough drivers, dangerous drivers. People overtake in, at, at bends. You see somebody doing an overtaking at a bend, and this is a train driver. Some, of, some drivers in Nigeria don't even know what is zebra crossing in the first place. I said, I told my children and others, I, if you try it, they will crush you. If you get to zebra crossing and they didn't stop, don't even try it. Just find a comfortable place and cross. Because if you stand on the zebra crossing, no, many drivers do not know that if anybody stands on that line, that you should stop and let the person pass. It doesn't happen here. Mm -hmm. And I personally asked some private drivers on my own investigation, what is zebra crossing? Uh, you, you, you know, Kiran, I'm not answering for him yeah. and I'm not standing forward for them, but I think that the FRAC now is more humane in, Let in terms talk. of approach, but they, they also need to maybe <laughs> Let him talk to us. on technology, you know, using technology, you know, to... Uh, if, if you are being humane yeah. and the job is not done and people are still driving, rough, what sense does it make? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Kiran, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's so nice hearing your... The way you see it, your view, which is important. But one thing I need to let you know is that you live in Abuja, and if you talk about, you started by saying people drive against traffic, for instance. Um, let's use uh, the Nyanya Road, hmm. for example. That's where people drive against traffic. When there is pressure and um, you see somebody coming from his house and his house is on the side where he needs to go and make you turn maybe about hmm. one kilometer away and he just side to try his lock and, and drive against traffic. You know, uh, what you need to understand is that there is dy dynamics about traffic management. If in the course of trying to punish one odd person, you will obstruct 10, 20, 50 law-abiding citizens, it's better to, as much as you can, verbally, quickly, warn that offender and let him go. Please explain that again. Okay. Mm. You see, somebody is driving against traffic. And for you to be able to stop him, it will affect those that are driving on their normal lane. So what I mean you is know, this, sir. If you stop him temporarily, give him a ticket. Within two minutes, you have done that. And let him go. Because he's going to pay money. Give him a ticket, mm -hmm. and he goes. And the traffic mm -hmm. flows again. My only, my concern is that that person should be punished for what he did. Yes. Yeah. Let him go and pay like 5000 10000 He won't do it again. Uh, the punishment we talk about, actually, punishment is not about that money that is going to pay. Mm -hmm. But so, in, li okay, listen, go ahead. listen, sometime, um, what we do is to get his identity and bring him to something like a classroom like this. Yes. He spends one hour, yes. sometime, maybe taking like 45 course. minutes. We show him what he has done and people who did like that and are not lucky enough to be arrested by road safety or police or VI or anybody. Something more severe. Somebody more severe arrested him. He crashed. Maybe you lose a limb or you lose your life. When they watch the video of uh, crash scenes and see that, okay, truly this person drove against traffic. This is what happened to him. So I was even lucky that his road safety that arrested me. It was not accident. That person goes home with something at the back of his mind. It will take time before he will do it again. So um, that idea of we write ticket and give him, then FRC does not have the power to decide, okay, uh, what you have done is 50,000, I'm going to charge you. Something has been written in the law. 
that if you do this, this is what will happen to you. If you are seen uh, using phone while driving, you will pay 3,000 naira. I, and I cannot go beyond that. I cannot say, this man, when I warned you last, uh, last time, you say you never do it again, you have done it again. So uh, it's no longer 3,000, it's going to be 10, I cannot do that. Because the law says, if you do this, this is the punishment. And that punishment is that if you accept that it is, okay, I did it, and uh, I'm going to pay the fine. If you say, no, I, I didn't do it, if you want to dispute, then I have to charge him before the magistrate, and I have to convince the magistrate that he actually did that. So before the magistrate say, okay, yeah, go and pay the fine. Okay. So that's the way it is. So, but well, what I want to say is that um, it's better for us to continue advocacy to enlighten the people because FRS government cannot be at every spot, everywhere. So we need to um, uh, let people know why they should be safety conscious. Not, it shouldn't be, uh, we are on the road, we are looking for who is going to commit offense so that we punish him. That does not change the attitude of people. The that does not make our society better. To amplify my question, so I can also conclude. Yeah. All right. I watch one TV program on one network. When your men, your equivalent of your men, when they are on the road, if they get you, they will pack you. If they they will give you one, uh, they you if you if you if you are yeah. drunk, if you if you've taken some level of alcohol, fifty percent level of money, you will go. In, as a matter of fact, they just take you to, to to somewhere, examine you, interview you, talk to you, advise you, and all of that. You go to court. They they, 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 they will tell you get to go to court, and then if they look at your offense, you can withdraw a license for one month or two months. You will not be driving, and yeah. all of that. They will do that. So what I'm asking is, it's not your making. Does it mean that uh, FRC should be? restructured or redesigned in terms of the act establishing you to empower you more to enforce what you are preaching FIRC has been there for over 20 years now and nigeria's draft culture has not changed so that bothers me a lot it has not changed we are ranked among the, about the second in the world when it comes to cra road crashes since last year and we're still there among the world we are over 190 countries of the world and we're number two in terms of crashes so what are we now achieving? If the law establishing FRSC did not empower it to enforce what you are you are sensitizing people on, then for me, I don't know. Maybe others could join us. Okay, let, let, um, I know you would like to respond to that, but yeah. we talked about with Eliza, and I know yeah. there was a time the FRSC, you know, made a lot of sensitization on the use yeah, of breathalyzers. Right are you going to deploy that in different? And then you're also deploying seven hundred and forty-three patrol vehicles across the country yes. what were what um what informed this number what were your anticipation thank you for uh, the issue of uh, drunk driving um technology has made it very easy to do enforcement on that we have breathalyzers different categories of we have the electronic evidence base we also have uh, the disposable ones so they have been deployed however we will not stop everybody and say okay everybody stop we want to test it is when we see somebody doing something you know you suspect that's what the law when you suspect then that's when we stop them. many so, Nigerians are, drivers so, are doing so many things suspicious things on the on the highway yes that's when we we'll stop them and then we we'll test to be sure whether is this person um has he taking alcohol and also even that uh, the law expects that it is when it has gone to certain level that is when uh, you have to stop the person, uh, take the vehicle from him and ask him to go and take a rest or you charge him to a mobile court. If the blood alcohol concentration has not gone beyond the legal limit, you leave the person. What it does this imply? Not. Because so, I, I don't understand why you, know, you are giving us this detail. I mean, it has to, be, to. It has to be used. We have not seen your men using it in Yaya. Uh, and Yaya is a crazy... No, no, we have it. If we go there now, you do, we have it. They are using it. I'm telling you, they are using it. Oh, okay. We have a lot of it this, that have been deployed now. L let's ask Jide to, 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 to come in here. Uh, because I am wor sorry, uh, I am worried that the law establishing FRSC did not make provision for setting functions by the agency to really ensure that the reason for which it was established can be felt by ensuring that Nigerians drive well. What do you think about the, the act establishing FRS? Should it be touched? Because from, from what he's saying, he has no power to do so many things. You know, he could, they could like to do it, but has no power to do that. You can't charge somebody, you know, if you're using phone 5,000. See, you can go to jail for doing that elsewhere. 
You can go to jail for doing that using your phone while driving elsewhere. Two weeks, three weeks jail, or your license or your license withdrawn for one month or three months, and so on. Well, I, I think it's within the purview of the new uh, commercial to initiate, maybe through the presidency, uh, for revision of the setting up uh, uh, FRSC. Uh, I know managing traffic in Nigeria is a cooler, given um, the fact that the roads are bad and the vehicles are also bad. And there are multiple agencies doing practically the same thing. Mm, VIO. There is VIO, there is Last Mile in Lagos, there is uh, 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 the road safety themselves, there is police. Mm. So you, you have this, uh, and I, I think uh, the internment, what, from what I heard Deputy Commissioner say, the internment is not to punish. Is to yes. is to uh, be, to work towards behavioral change, and I think if they uh, increase their enlightenment, like this video, they make you watch when you see human beings burning, or somebody who was alive this minute and the next minute is lying, you know, lifeless. It makes you sober. There is no preaching that does more to your psyche than to see that it could have been you. So I agree, Kiran and uh, Claire, that it lies within uh, the uh, powers of the court martial to have dialogue with the either the supervising ministry or the president to say there is a need to touch some sections mm -hmm. of the act to give it more teeth to be able to confront modern day uh, uh, drive culture because really speaking um, the the drive culture of average Nigerian leaves more to be desired and even if FRC have twice the number they have they have to operate within the law you know there was even a time that a road safety was taken to court because somebody committed a crime. And that crime was committed on a state road. And FRC is said to be a federal agency. The person did not contend that he didn't commit the crime. He went to court to challenge the fact that, yes, I committed that crime, but I didn't commit it on a federal right. highway. Yes. So you have no right to challenge. You can see how technical people can be uh, when it comes to, particularly those who know their rights. And he says something which is very instructive. If you, you park somebody and say you are driving against traffic and there is no CCTV to support your claim, he can deny. And if, from what he said, if he says, I didn't do it, it now leaves you to take him. IFRS cannot impose that sanction. He has to now take him to a magistrate. And then it is is word against the driver. So, it is now left to the discussion of the magistrate to say, okay, from what I've seen, you committed the offense or you didn't commit. So, there are challenges with contemporary uh, management of traffic. I agree 100%. That is why. And the personnels are not enough, which is why people like you, Chief, have to be brought in as special marshal. But how much are we doing to help the system, the volunteer culture, you know, some of us who, who claim to be special martial are even caught breaking traffic rules. You see them put the vest <laughs> on the dashboard, <laughs> and then when you are there, they say, Don't you know I'm a special master? <laughs> but that should even confer on you, you know, discipline yeah. that you were picked among the lot to help in managing traffic. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we just need a whole lot of reorientation. Laws alone will not do it. I agree, we can fix the law, we can tie the knots and bolts of the law. But if we do not have attitudinal change, if the, um, the uh, motor park operators are not cooperating to ensure that even in their own motor parks, there are no sales of alcohol, because these have been banned, that you cannot sell have people selling alcohol and drugs 
within the motor parks. But go there today. You see them selling paraga, uh, law, and uh, all manner of stuff. So is it road safety that will leave in the highway to come and be enforcing that thing? So they need the support of the drivers' unions. Yes. They need the support of ordinary citizens, the road man, the special marshals, the cooperation of other traffic management agencies like the police, like the VIO, like the state-based uh, traffic management, they need to work collaboratively. Yeah, but where there is a tough war, yeah. this is me, this is my territory, you cannot come here and be dictating to me, and all of that. That is why yeah, we see yes, let's, uh, let's, a lot. Let me pause you, uh, catch some breath. Thank you, you know, <laughs> for bringing this uh, point out. And I'm sure that uh, Comrade uh, Najim Yassin would like to respond to this but uh we will start off with um uh wing commander retired here uh, when we come back from a short break and we'll also give you the opportunity to respond let's take a short break now all right uh, you're welcome back uh, to the program we're glad to see with us this morning on good morning nigeria we are looking at uh, the christmas celebration and the activities uh that are usually characterized uh, the period you now where we are taking on the different uh, dimensions of conversation security food items rising part of food items uh high cost of also of uh, uh fuel scarcity of fuel in some places and what have you all happening within this very period and of course uh, our guests have been uh, trying to do justice to the issues uh, my colleague and i have been able to raise this morning and uh, to continue the conversation uh let's bring in a uh, uh, commander wing commander musa samanu uh retired um my colleague claire raised a number of issues shortly before we went on break mm -hmm. and that has to do with the explanations you know uh, offered by a friend here from the road safety so what's your own contribution so what well, my take is that um sometimes a lot of times uh, nigerians or a lot of organizations go about saying we need some kind of our uh, acts to be tweaked and so on but honestly if you look at starting from our constitution and the rest we have so many laws out there that we will be able to do a lot of things but sometimes we still ask for more without implementing what is there like the issue of uh rightly by the court marshal that the highest perhaps is three thousand for 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 call and so now let's start with that for every person that is making a call give him that three thousand if that's the highest that could be given the inconvenience of going to pay for that three thousand the you know that checks a person i mean no matter how rich you are you don't want to be paying three thousand every day and so on then secondly i feel sometimes also that um we we want to be too nice every agency that is supposed to enforce enforcement is not about being nice yes you have to be very civil and but you have to be very deliberate you have to be very firm when those uh, uh, offenses, uh offenses are committed, are committed. I, I was just talking that uh if you're coming from nyanya also by that uh mm -hmm. starting from karu bridge uh about sunny abacha uh, barracks bridge yeah. you see people coming against the traffic in the morning yeah. and so and before you realize somebody is just coming right against uh, the okay. traffic you can imagine when accidents happen and it doesn't matter if you have to take a person to court that's fine take him to court or her to court let them know that when they commit this offense they are going to court even if it's i mean we know how long the judicial system uh takes to or even if it's a fast track and so on but let's implement that let's try to do it people that can serve as a deterrence when people see what happens to the next person, the time, the resources, and so on, there is that like. But I think personally, also again, that we are allowing too many people to drive on the ways that are on, ought not to be on the road. For example, I think it's very easy to get the driver's license. This is my personal experience. I sorry, personal view. Mm -hmm. I feel that the road safety should do more to ensure that um, people have to go through all those processes, know the rules and regulations when it comes to driving and how can someone that lives say for example from a village where there are no two three vehicles and you bring him to the heart of say Maitema or Asokoro and give him a vehicle to drive he does he will not understand some of these issues and so on. so you have people that don't have, are not supposed to be on those roads 
uh, there on the road. So I think more can be done in terms of ensuring uh, that uh, people go through the process to get these licenses. And when there is uh, there are infractions and so on, that there are some kind of ways that they, they get back and ensure that they learn the basic rules uh, of driving and maybe the signages and so on and, and so forth. And the culprits, um, I must say, are men in uniform. Yes, and again, <laughs> no, I agree. Incidentally, but, they're, 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 you are very right. Yes. They are the ones that would not obey traffic because they are in uniform. But do you know, you'll be surprised. Um, I live in the barracks. Uh, internally, within the barracks, there are campaigns to ensure that when you get your tra driver's license, there are times, the Air Force barracks that I lived on, you close the gate entirely. You can't get in or out without a driver's license, without ensuring that your particulars are there. They, they do sensitization. They invite the road safety. I think what used to happen, and this is back to the authorities in the military and so on, uh, we have to take responsibility. When you wear uniform, you have additional responsibility to obey outside the, the barracks yes yes outside the barracks to even show good example within the barracks you can't do that then why should you do it inside the barracks? within the barracks there are speed limits which i have observed uh, observed the military police that's the air police naval police or the air police uh apprehend people impound vehicles within the barracks if you go against that mm -hmm. uh let, let's say minors uh, on the barracks you can't get that uh, but like I said, we, a lot of these agencies, we want to be too nice. So maybe that is creeping also in our barracks and so on. And when we come out here where uh, people behave in a way that is unexpected of them. Mm. But yes, I agree. Uh, but it's a misnomer. The military does a lot of sensitization. They impound. And those that are caught, honestly, if you are caught, let's say by the road safety and sent back to the military, you'll be surprised the harsh punishment that are given to personnel. So they, because they get away, so I will encourage the road safety, if people in uniform do that, report them. They have units, report them, because mm -hmm. the sanctions are very, very high when you do that in uniform, uh, in the barrack. Because they can charge you for so many things. They can charge you for a conduct that is prejudiced to service discipline. They can charge you so many reasons why you can't be punished when you do that, especially when it is outside. The military takes it highly exceptional in terms of people that tarnish the image of the institution mm -hmm. outside the barracks. Let me let me take you again. We are not have time on security. You know, uh, we hear the slogan all the time, security is everybody's business, but there are those that are trained, you and know, to provide yeah, it's, it's security. So what should those that will be, you know, embarking from one place to the other, you know, and those that will be leaving their homes behind, uh, what are those primary security tips that they must abide. So the speak. first thing is personal security is your responsibility. First of all, you use that sixth sense. The security is about also using the sixth sense that is in you, or common sense if we put it that way. Mm -hmm. So take, know where you are going to first of all. Go know the means, to know the way I'm headed to, what is the security situation there? So that it, you prepare yourself psychologically and so on. Then back here, uh, like we said earlier on, look at your surroundings let's put security lights let's you know uh, have very good and cordial relationship with our neighbors but also very important there's this uh, community-based security arrangements that are made some of them tend to be very active uh, and very uh, very uh, to a large extent professional and so on so let's also try to improve on that i am aware that uh, the last time we we're here with the deputy commissioner of police uh, they spoke about arrangements that are made by the police and other security agencies during this uh, uh, mm. uh, t uh, festive period. Now there is the issue of let everybody be, let's pay attention. Let's use that sixth sense. When you see something, say something. Say it to the next person. Tell when there is something that is unusual, report. Say to something. You don't have to go to the police. Just ask your neighbor. I, I thought this and so on. So let's be observant. Uh, let's, uh, when we are going, let's also be mindful of those that are of our environment. Let's also put others into consideration. Uh, and I think when we do that, uh, when we do all this, the small, small things, uh, the society, everybody does that. You find out that it makes it a safer place and a safer time okay. to live. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, that's on security. But uh, let's return to uh, Najim. 
Yasin once more. Uh, you are not going to speak on security, but uh, on the issue of uh, uh, Baraga or whatever. <laughs> uh, 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 Baraga, you know, that your men normally take. You know, these days, if you go to parks, you may not find the sellers in, within the parks, but just outside, just uh, two steps away from the, from the park, you, you, and, and you get it. Now, what would be your suggestion with respect to how your men can be disciplined? Because uh, whether we like it or not, there are good drivers and there are bad drivers. They are all licensed to drive, but some go on the road and, of course, try to maneuver the car. Some want to be James Bond. Some want to, you know, show that uh, their cars are, are, are more uh, healthy in terms of uh, how you can use it to maneuver and speed and what have you. Now, if they are caught, what kind of discipline would you prefer to be given to your men to ensure that they don't return to the bad ways of driving. Assuming uh, your drivers are caught on the road by uh, FRC, would you suggest that the licenses be withdrawn temporarily or be punished by way of uh, paying a fine or what? What would be your suggestion? Because there must be something to be done to ensure that they abide by the rules and regulations guiding driving in the country. Yeah, thank you very much. The Federal Road Safety Corps have the rules of for punishment for any drivers that violates the traffic sign or traffic offender. And uh, what I would say here is to call on the Federal Road Safety Corps to enforce all these rules so that the bad drivers can be put into their senses. And the issue of this paragraph or whatever, we have said it in several, many times and in many forums, that you, you go to the designated motor parks that we have controlled, you can't find anywhere that they are selling paragraph inside the designated motor parks. And, and this is this work of the security agencies. To move into the park and anyone they find selling paraga and whatever, let them get him arrested. Because the motor park is not where if you if paraga you go to the pier pal or whatever, but not in the motor parks. So the security agency can enforce and make sure that with the co with, with conjunction of our members to make sure that they get rid of these people selling paraga inside the parks because they are trying to endanger the life of the commuters so this is my own and call on the federal safety corps that they should enforce any offenders of the traffic offense so that it can be a deterrence to all those that are bad drivers this is what i can say here is is there any Within this period, this, uh, you know, it's just two days to, to Christmas uh, celebration. Um, is there anything that you've noticed in terms of uh, the volume of, you know, people making, um, you know, moving from place to place? And uh, in terms of uh, safety, uh, in terms of the accident, because I know that from the records we have uh, from FRSC, uh, it says there was uh, an 8% reduction in uh, crashes uh, this year than last year. I, I, do, I don't know how uh, he, he will have to confirm for us. Uh, so what have you seen in terms of ability of your men to ensure uh, safety on the roads? Yeah, yeah it is, uh, we have been calling on them, call on the drivers to make sure that when they are on the highways, they should abide by the road signs on the highways. And we make sure that there is a workshop, seminars, calling on the driver, because this is the festivity period. That there is rush, people moving from one place to the other, to make sure that they are oddly on the highways and all these things. But more so, this period, we know it is a serious uh, time for the FRSC because a lot of most of the, most of the um, vehicles on the highways 
you will see those who are not even professional drivers because it is driving that everybody thinks if you drive if you learn a vehicle for two months three months you have become a driver there is a professional drivers from those who are not professionals because professional drivers you go through all uh, uh, before he got his driver's license or whatever but there are people that will just enter the road it's not a professional driver and you carry his vehicle on the highway be driving over speeding or whatever so all those ones it is not all the, the drivers on the highway is our members so this is the work this is the area where the federal road safety corps should make sure order their means to enforce and arrest those who are not who are violating the roadside thank you once again um Rajim for reaching us all the way from uh, uh, Kwara State. Um, gentlemen, there, are, there is an increase in vehicular movements. That's just the basic thing. Yeah. And I want to ask you um, whether FRAC is equipped, not just in terms of vehicles, in terms of other gadgets that you may require to carry out your responsibility. And again, do you have uh, that... Uh, um, uh, enough staff to cater for the you know coverage of the 36 states of nigeria and of course abuja and this issue that uh uh Jide raised will concern on uh, whether you have powers on uh, state road or federal road and all of that mm -hmm. i don't know whether that is uh, uh in, in play and again we used to have a, a categorization of licenses or something i don't know whether that's still in existence I have e license b license and what have you just quickly, just touch on all of this before we okay. conclude. Okay, thank uh, you very much, Gary. Uh, yeah, you load me with questions, but it's good. It shows <laughs> that uh, you are like every other Nigerian. We are so interested in uh, what happens on the road because that is the mode of transport that we, we use most. Mm. Ninety percent of uh, movement of goods, services, persons is done on the road. Um, the issue of uh, staff. Well, we don't have enough staff to 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 monitor the 204,000 kilometers of road and then uh, the movement of 200 million Nigerians. So, uh, but we make the best use of what we have. We have vehicles, we have tow trucks, ambulances to take care of um, uh, rescue services. And we also have FRC activities, actually technology uh, based. We, we em employ a lot of uh, ICT in our job. As we speak, uh, in my control room, I can see what is going on all over Nigeria. We have body camera. Once, like uh, the second Niger Bridge has just been opened now uh, from my office, I'm watching the traffic there. And I can give instruction to my men uh, if I believe that the way they are positioned is obstructing the traffic. Your job is to make the traffic flow, not to obstruct mm -hmm. it. So I talk to them. The same thing, I'm monitoring the Mutala Bridge in. Uh, in the cryptography there mm -hmm. you know uh, we observe the, the the trend of the traffic and then when it's getting snarled up ahead we can see it and then tell the people that are close to the bridge that there is a deluge of traffic that is coming mm -hmm. so make sure that if there is any obstruction by the roadside okay. remove them so that two lanes can be flowing uh, correctly so Technology helps us a lot mm -hmm. that uh, where we used to put 10, 15 men, we could put just one person who is running a camera to help us, you know, to see what is going on, to monitor the traffic. Mm -hmm. So that is there. Then we also um, uh, work with this state traffic management agency that you talk about. Um, there is no conflict. We, we complement each other. Mm -hmm. For instance, in Ogo State, we have trace. By this time, trace will come to Muwe, they come to Shagamu to join us. Because at the exchange there, you see the traffic there. Is, uh, as many people as possible that come to help, they, they are welcome. So even as special machines, we expect that when you finish your program, you come to the road, come and join us. <laughs> you say you, you run away now. <laughs> you, you want to bring me back? <laughs> yes, you, you, want you can to. negotiate. So, so, no, no, no. no, no, no. no. Like uh, Mr. Ajide said, that spirit of voluntarism. I volunteer. Yes. I know, but you run away. I don't want to go. All right, all right. Because, uh, I, I, I let let me the walk out. Thank you very much. Yes, we really don't have much time now. But in just 30 seconds, which are the notorious highways in terms of traffic and crashes okay um i would not want to say notorious now uh, but the flash points flash points we call it um 
traffic jam prone areas mm -hmm. uh, the major bridges particularly we talk about the uh, Muntala Bridge in uh, in uh, Kotokarufi there. They were talking about uh, the two Niger bridges now. Luckily for us, the Minister of Works, you know, opened the bridge so that uh, it can be used during this period. So it has given us a great relief. However, uh, people coming from the west, facing the east, many of them are not aware that the second bridge is open. Mm -hmm. Some don't even believe I was there uh, Tuesday last week and we're virtually begging them. The bridge is open. They are a security mm -hmm. men. Please go this way. Use the bridge. Mm -hmm. You will cut off the whole of furniture. If you are going to Imo, you are going to Abia, you are mm -hmm. going to cross mm -hmm. the yes. bomb. Uh, and right on the bridge, those of them that agree, when they saw it, they say, Wow, I can't believe it. Mm -hmm. I've cut off furniture. I've, Deputy, I've saved Deputy, one hour. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so we are Kamasha. using this opportunity to tell people, please use the second Niger bridge if you are going eastwards. Thank Deputy, you very much. Deputy Call Marshal Operations, I didn't want to stop you when you started talking about the second Niger Bridge, but I just must, we must go. Thank you. Fact, Joshua I'm happy, Kaede. Judge, I'm happy. That bridge was built for me. Okay. <laughs> okay. You are taking our time. <laughs> <laughs> Joshua Kaede Fanola, uh, Deputy Call Marshal Operations, Federal Road Safety Court. Thank you very much for Thank joining you, us. Wing Commander Musa Salmano, retired development peace and security expert. Always a pleasure to have you with Thank us. Thank you for having uh, me. Jide Ojo is a public affairs analyst, our own in-house analyst. Always a play delight to have you, Jide. Merry and, Christmas. Uh, of course, we had uh, joining us via Zoom all the way from Ilori, uh, Kwara State, is a uh, comrade Najim Yassin, who is the vice president of international, I'm trying Trans to get it now, Transport Federation. Uh, Transport Federation. Thank you very much, uh, comrade, for joining us. All right, let's quickly uh, take a look at sports. And we hear the Super Eagles of Nigeria drop three places in the world and drop one place in Africa in the latest FIFA rankings. And the Central Bank of Argentina are also reportedly making moves to put World Cup winner Mercy's face on one of its currency notes. Yeah. The Super Eagles dropped three places in the latest monthly ranking released by FIFA on Thursday. The ranking was released on the official website of the World Soccer Governing Body on Thursday. The three-time African champions dropped from 32nd to 35th position in the world. Jose Pacero's side although maintained their position among the top five teams in Africa. They however slipped from 4th to 5th position. The Atlas Lions of Morocco moved to top position on the ranking in Africa following their impressive performance at the just-concluded 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar. The Taranga Lions of Senegal dropped to second position on the continent, with Tunisia remaining in third, while the indomitable Lions of Cameroon jumped to fourth position. Meanwhile, Argentina's central bank are reportedly considering putting Qatar 2022 World Cup winner Lionel Messi's face on a new banknote. Messi led the Alba Celeste to a third World Cup title on Sunday after overcoming France 4-2 on penalties at the just-concluded Qatar World Cup. Messi scored twice in regulation time, which ended 3 all, with PSG teammate Kylian Mbappe bagging a hat-trick. And according to El Financiero, Argentina's central bank are said to be contemplating honouring Messi by putting his face on a banknote. Messi and his Argentina teammates flew in home after their World Cup victory and were greeted by millions of fans packing the streets of Buenos Aires. All right, and uh, that's Good Morning Nigeria for today. We thank you for watching, and uh, of course, I'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas. My name is Kirian Umayo. I'm Claire Adilabu Abdul Razak. I do have a Merry Christmas. In other parts of the country, it's already snowing white Christmas. So, we'll see you here on Monday, and from all of us.